Great seeing you back for Devos. As you know, we are in Mark chapter two. We're working through that. So I want to go on in this story here, Mark chapter two. And why don't you remember this? Jesus changes everything. Now, I know some of you will look at me and say, oh, amen, that's true. Uh, yeah, but most of us are not living that. Some of us got some real problems in this area. So I want you to see what happened in Mark chapter two, eighteen. It says, now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Okay, so fast, fasting's good. Uh, when you really, really want something, God wants you to get alone with him. Give something up. Show God how serious you are. Look, at, and the people came and said to him, why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast? But your disciples do not fast. Okay, so the Pharisees are fasting. Other people are fasting. But Jesus' disciples and Jesus are not fasting. Look, look at how Jesus answers this. In Mark 2, 19, Jesus said, can the wedding guest fast while the bridegroom is with them. Let's just stop there. We know in the New Testament, Jesus said that we are the bride and Jesus is the bridegroom. Okay, so the church, we're the bride. He's the groom. We're, we're waiting for him to come back at the rapture. He says, now, as long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in that day. Okay, I'm going to make it simple. Jesus is letting them know, you're fasting that God is going to do something for you, or God's going to come to you, help you. He says, well, God's here. <laughs> Jesus is God. He says, so the bridegroom is there with the bride. And our, you know, the bridegroom's here, and he goes, they don't need to fast. And he's letting them know God's there, but they couldn't understand this. People will not trust in Jesus as their Savior because they will not let go of the traditions of their churches. This is so huge. This is so huge. So I've got somebody coming to church, and they go, went to, used to go to this certain church, and they said, you know, pastor, I'm coming to the church. I know you, uh, this salvation thing. I really want to do it, or they'll claim they did it, but I can't come to your church because in my church, we stand, we kneel. We stand, we kneel. We stand, we kneel. I like that. I go, that's cute. Really? I go, you know the church didn't pro preach salvation at all, right? They go, I know, I know. But I just can't get out of me because I stand, I kneel, I stand, I kneel, I stand, I kneel. And then somebody reads scripture. I have no idea what they're saying. It's another language. But I really like it. Okay, let me tell you. This is like stupid. I'm, I'm telling you, straight. <laughs> oh, That's all I'm saying. I speak it the way it is. But they can't give up that tradition. I'm going back to that church. Sad. They can't give up the tradition. And so the tradition is more important than God. Look at Jesus as something new, and he has something better. Those of you, you come to the church, and you, and you say, well, you know, I, I went to this church, and when you went into church, and everybody was real quiet. Nobody talked. In your church, everybody's talking to each other. They like each other. I come from a church. They don't like each other. They don't talk to each other. But it was holy. That's not holy. Somebody comes in. Okay, now I want to let you know, I'm old-fashioned on some things. I, I don't say a lot about it. But we have a band. They do a great job. They have beautiful music. I have people, they're not used to a band. They go, well, you know, I, I, I've got to go to this little church. There's six people there. Nobody gets saved there. But I go there because there's a 90-year-old lady, and she plays the piano. But it's hymns. And so I have to go there because I like the tradition of hymns. Do you know what I'm getting here? Listen, I'm not knocking it. I'm just telling you here. When Jesus came, he changed everything. Out with the old, in with the new. Mark 2.21. No one sews, Jesus says, a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Now, we don't quite understand this, but back then they had real big shrinkage problems, okay? So you couldn't put new cloth on old garment. You had to take old garment cloth on old garment. If he does, the patch will tear away from from it, and the new from the old, and the, uh, a works tear is made, meaning you can't mix the old with the new. Did you hear that? Some of you want to put good works with your salvation. You can't do that. Some of you want to say, well, I was baptized by tradition of sprinkling. I was a month old, and I, I got a sprinkle baptism. Okay, it's not biblical, but it's tradition. Okay, you can't mix that. You got to go all the way with the word of God. Mark, verse 22 no one can put new wine in the old wineskin. And he said it's going to burst the wineskin. Why? Because 
old wine, old wine skin, it was fine. Took new wine, it says you had to put a new wine skin. Why new wine will stretch the old container and make a burst. This back in that day. Can't mix old with new. That's always getting down here too. God's plan is always better than our plan. Always. Okay, so I want to tell you. Right now, embrace a new life in Christ. Let go of the old ways of the church, maybe you've been from, and just embrace the word of God and Jesus' teaching. 